What is a tree, exactly? The dictionary defines it as a woody plant with a trunk from which branches grow. So the main shoot must be dominant and grow steadily upward, or the plant is classified as a shrub, which has many smaller trunks, or rather branches, that originate from a common rootstock. coffee so um i was going to be teaching my last yoga class of the year this morning but then last night um a new lockdown so that's for midnight so then yoga was off um although bert has gone down there to clean he cleans the studio anyway so he's going to do the final clean of the year yeah so we're in lockdown now um I think, well, I don't know when it's, how long it's for, but it was initially it was going to be from Christmas Eve and they brought it forward. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening. So I did just pop out really early to buy like four bags of coffee just to see me through. <laughs> so I quite like um, stocking up, um, especially so the mixture of Christmas and lockdown is like, you know, a, a big, uh, a big stocking up. So anyway, yeah, so this is in Wales. I'm not sure. I know that it's kind of maybe slightly different in parts of um, the UK and I'm not really up on the differences because I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just focusing on where I am and what I can do. So yes, so we weren't planning on going anywhere anyway. So it's kind of completely fine, but it does make you feel, I don't know, it made me feel like a little bit, oh, okay, they're doing lockdown. This is bad type feeling. Um, so I hope you're all okay wherever you are and uh, what's going on with the pandemic and this new strain and all of that. Um, yeah, we can still have a kind of nice uh, Christmas if you celebrate. So I just thought, um, it's the last day of bias break as well. There was the live show last night, which was fun and like a bit scary. Um, I hope it was okay. <laughs> uh, I've got this to finish. So a that's way by uh, Darcy Little Badger. And I've, I haven't read very much, so I'm going to um, do my best to read this today. Um, I am really liking it so far. Um, I I do think, I, I'm, I'm slightly going to reserve judgment on this until I've read a little bit further, but I do feel that it is a bit um, pitched oddly. So it is about a 17-year-old, and it feels... the. the the way the story is being told feels almost like a kind of um, eight to twelve kind of story, like a middle grade story. Um, I know the content doesn't reflect that, but I feel that that's what the. I don't think the content is anyway. I haven't got very far, but that, um, I I feel yeah for me that's what's happening with that, which isn't doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it, but I just feel it's maybe a little bit. Anyway, I, we will see. I'm liking it. Um, yesterday. I finished Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and I so enjoyed this one. Um, I didn't, because it's had mixed reviews and I thought, oh, maybe I won't like it. Um, but I was really into it. So it's very much like a, a kind of watching some kind of old Gothic movie. So it's set in the 50s in Mexico um, about a young woman who has to go and uh, she's been getting these weird letters from her cousin who's recently got married and she goes to um, visit her because they're really worried about her and she lives in this kind of remote um, crumbling down house. And when she gets there, her her cousin is ill and she's like really concerned and she wants to get a doctor to her or get to see a psychiatrist. And she's kind of met with this, um, the, the family she's married into are kind of weird and she's met with this resistance about trying to get her cousin help. Um, it's a, quite a slow burn at the beginning and then it does go all out. Um, but I loved it. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked where it went in the second half. Um, it was unexpected. Uh, I thought it was quite unique. Um, 
yeah I was really into it and it felt like a kind of gothicy yeah like a kind of one of those gothicy romances uh, horror romance so I really enjoyed it um I was talking to Doris about it from all the books and she um was saying about how apparently it's based on a little bit on the yellow wallpaper and I didn't know that, but a little bit of the way in, I did kind of think, oh, that's a bit like the other wallpaper. So I thought that was interesting as well. So, yeah, I was really into it. And um, I'm going to, I know that she's got another book, hasn't she? The um, Gods of Jade and Shadow, which I wasn't, which I wasn't tempted by, but now I might be. So, yeah, that's that one. That is my little morning update. I think I'm going to do a stack today. Yesterday we just did a short vlog because it was we were busy. We went on a walk. Um, then Bert had to do some work. Then we had the live show. Then um, I need to do a couple of deliveries of local people for little gifts. So my sister's bopping around with we're doing a gift exchange. I just went to co-op and I bumped into one of my best friends in co-op who I hadn't seen since March. So, yeah. Okay. I'll go before I cry about that. <laughs> What's happening, Bobby? We're doing another stack, stack tour. Pile, Yay! Pile of books on the ground tour. Quite a, a lot of books to go through. We're just going to uh, breeze through them, aren't we, shall we? Yeah. Okay. First off, Herta Muller, The Passport. I have yet to read any Herta Muller. I don't know. Anyone know anything about Herta Muller? Someone's bound to have read something. Yeah. 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 Um, Why did you get that one? Uh, I might have got a uh, sent to me. She goes a free I one. Yeah. It. Yeah. I don't feel you'd. I don't know. No. Maybe back in the day I might have bought it. Who knows? I've still got to read Pure Hollywood by Christine Shipp. This is a short story collection um, that looks fantastic. It's fairly recent. Blurred by a Tessa Moshfeg on the back. With LA Hollywood sort of back backdrop of. What to read? Um, looks really good. George Saunders also rates it. Uh, Joanna Russ, the female man. Uh, yeah, I should read this. I got this um, quite cheap in HMV in uh, City Centre. Um, I have read another Joanna Ross. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how um, current it's going to read, but I think it's kind of quite interesting to read sort of 70s feminist sci-fi. Yeah. Um, I, I actually really enjoyed the other book by her that I read. Um, so yeah, what do we think of this cover, Shani? I kind of like it. It looks a bit sort of um, witchy, doesn't it? It's a bit, yeah. Yeah, I think it's sort of that mix of sort of seventies counterculture feminist ideology with sort of science fiction. It sounds great, I think. Oh well, I have actually read this. This is Alice Walker, her her Blue Body, Everything We Know. Um, it's poems. Is this yours? I think it's mine. Yeah. yeah. Um, Earthling poems, nineteen sixty five to nineteen ninety. So it's yeah, it's a massive. Have you read all of it? Collection. I have read it, but there's no room in my uh... collection, so I think it's ended up on a pile. Um, but yeah, actually, I, I haven't read any of Alice Walker's novels, but I love her poetry. And this is, um, if it's still in print, highly recommend. It's a great collection. Um, it's on the women's press. So yeah, excellent. Um, Beryl Bainbridge. You I like really, a bit of Beryl, I, I love a bit you? of Beryl Bainbridge. Um, uh, I know she's written some historical novels, which I haven't read. I'm kind of avoiding them a bit. But this is, I think, an early 70s one called Another Part of the Wood. Yeah, this was uh, 60s. It's released as part of the Penguin Decades series where they did uh, sort of iconic books from each decade and this is one of the ones from the 60s. This is actually, I think, set in Wales. No. Yeah. Um, published in 1968 and foreshadowed many of the themes of her later novels, especially the cruelties and power struggles which exist among people. It is high summer and two families are holidaying in Wales where there is nothing to do but play Monopoly, take long walks and snipe at one another. It's like our life right now. <laughs> That's a really interesting cover as well. I'm not sure what's I'm, going on there, but I like yeah, it. Yeah, I'm into that cover. Yeah, this is uh, Elmore Leonard, Gold Coast. Have you read a few Elmore Leonard? Um, I like his westerns as well. He's just he's a really accomplished writer. Uh, this is from 1980, so I think yeah, if anyone sort of struggled to get into the sort of crime genre, then I think Elmore Leonard is a really good sort of gateway into that. He's just a really sharp writer, sort of hard boiled. This one is set in the Florida Gold Coast. Oh, I do like a Florida yeah. set book. Yeah. Do yes, you know I mean... who's got like a new book out next year? Is Kristen Arnott. Oh, really? Yeah. You, you liked the last one, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's exciting. Yeah. 
Another crime one. This is Mucho Mojo by Joe R. Lansdale. This is a Hap and Leonard novel. Hap and Leonard are sort of ongoing characters. This is book two. I read book one. I really enjoyed it. It was incredibly violent. Um, but yeah, Hap and Leonard return in this incredible mad dash thriller loaded with crack addicts, a serial killer and a serious body count. The Poet Laureate of the East Texas Backwoods, it says on there. I should really get to that. That sounds good. Oh, well, I'm not sure if we're even going to hold on to this one. This is The Darkest Rising by Susan Cooper. There was the uh, Darkest Rising kind of readathon a couple of years ago. Was it last year? It was last year, was I think, year? wasn't yeah. it? Um, and I was really excited about it. Me too. Um, but I DNF'd it. I was, yeah. yeah. And I, you didn't even start, did you? I, I read a few pages and then I sort of wasn't in the mood. But it, which is why we've kept it, because I think I would actually like it. Yeah, it felt very much like um, a book you'd read in school as a child. Yeah, and I kind <laughs> like of a like proper, that a proper, I don't know yeah. if you would. <laughs> I yeah. think I do. <laughs> Hold on to that one. This, I really want to read this. This is The Red House Mystery by A. A. Milne <gasps> of Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. This was his um, first and only, I think, foray into crime fiction. I could be wrong. P.G. Woodhouse says, I love his writing. Amazing. Yeah, it's a rediscovered classic. Um, You're a rediscovered classic. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's his only detective story. Secret passages, uninvited guests, a sinister valet and a puzzling murder lay the foundations for a classic crime caper. So I think it's probably sort of quite a charming... Yeah, a bit of a romp. ...fun one as well. Yeah, a bit of a romp. But yeah. I imagine that would be good. I think so too. You've read this one, Jamie. I've read that they purely shoot... because of the Gilmore Girls the Gilmore episode. Girls, yeah. <laughs> the uh, dance thing. Yeah. They shoot Gilmore's, don't they? That, that episode's called... <laughs> by Horace McCoy yeah I bought this uh, and then Sean read it and I just didn't get around to it yet so it's it's kind of a novella quick read this is the kind of thing I'm in the mood to read at the moment actually so yeah it's a, a classic American novel and it's about a uh, dance marathon competition and that's about as much as I know but it says presents life in its most brutal aspect yeah um, I really enjoyed it but it hasn't I, I can't remember huge amounts about it yeah. um, but I think it was quite yeah it's a bit dark yeah it's not like the Gilmore Girls episode. No. <laughs> First published in 1935. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a long time It didn't time feel ago. that old, I don't think. No, and they did a film of it in 1969. Mm. With Jane Fonda. <gasps> the great Jane Fonda. Wow, we should maybe watch yeah. that when you've read it. Uh, this is another book I've had for a long time. The Year of the Hair. Cover should we... Oh, And that's, that's Arthur sweet. Basilina. Please correct me if I've pronounced that wrongly. It's a Finnish novel. Um, what's it about? I should read that one. Yeah, Vatanen, the journalist, is sick of his job and fed up with city life. One summer evening while he's out on an assignment, his car hits a young hare on a country road. Um, he goes in search of the injured creature and this small incident becomes a life-changing experience as he decides to break free from the world's constraints. It's been a long-time bestseller in Finland and in France. Philip Larkin, Jill. This just sounds like perfection to me. I, I like a bit of Philip Larkin. Me too. Um, that cover's is, gorgeous, isn't, isn't it? it? This is a novel, uh, a subtle and moving account of a young English undergraduate from the provinces. This portrait of Oxford during the war is now regarded by critics as a classic of its It just looks great. Yeah. It? yeah. So um, Philip Larkin was a librarian, wasn't he? Yes, yeah. And my parents were both librarians. And they would, like, you know, talk about Philip Larkin. Oh, and really? For, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't really remember in what context, but for many years, I kind of thought that Philip Larkin was just, like, a, a family oh, friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested why your parents were chatting about Philip Larkin. I mean, he's he was, like, um, I think they'd read him. Yeah. And I think he was, like, I guess, really famous, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. In, in uh, like... Yeah. Quite a household name, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, but I, got, I can't remember any of the context, but I did, yeah. yeah, for years think it was just like someone they knew. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they've read this. You could ask them. Yeah. yeah. My dad might be interested, actually. Yeah. Okay. What do we think of, of reading this one, guys? This is E.L. Doctoro, The Waterworks. Um, I bought it because I thought it sounded really good and I was kind of intrigued to read. Um, I read one E.L. Doctoro. Um, Something in Langley, Homer and Langley, I think it was called. I really enjoyed that. 
Um, this is one of his lesser known novels and it had really bad ratings when I had a look at it when I first. Um, one rainy morning in 1871 in Lower Manhattan, Martin Pemberton sees in a pass passing stagecoach uh, several eld elderly men, one of whom he recognises as his supposedly dead and buried father. So it's kind of like a mystery to solve that. I think it sounds potentially like it could be really good. I like the sort of the idea of, I love the cover and mm. the kind of sort of snowy Lower Manhattan I can't believe I still haven't read this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. It's tiny. I've started it even many times, um, but I just haven't sort of got to grips with it yet. Yeah. The Mad Toy by Roberto Alt. This is Spanish, I think. Did you buy it because your name's Roberto? Yes. Translated by James Womack. Um, unleashing a wave of petty crime on 1920 Buenos Aires. Stealing books and light bulbs from libraries and... Dreaming of show-stopping murders, Silvio Astia and his gang embody the disaffection of youth. Argentina. S snapshot of Argentina. Snapshop. A snapshot of Argentina at a formative time in its history embodies the human condition. Uh, doesn't say when it's from. Can't remember why I bought it, but I mean, I'm glad I have it. It looks good. Forward by Colm Toybian. Oh, okay. <laughs> The last days of Detroit, motor cars, Motown, and the collapse of industrial giant. Uh, I can't see myself reading this, to be honest, but maybe I could see myself yeah. reading it. I bought it after we saw the um, Only Lovers Left Alive. Only Lovers Left Alive, the, the vampire film, which is set in Detroit and had quite a sort of lot of uh, driving around Detroit late yeah. at night, sort of. So when we we watched that in the cinema, didn't we? When yeah. we watched it, I was like completely in love with Sounded, it, and yeah. it's like this is amazing. Yeah. And then we got it on DVD and watched it again. And we're like, yeah. oh, God. It's very irritating. <laughs> yeah. I think it looks good. I, I would read it. Yeah. It says, once America's capitalist dream town, the Silicon Valley of the Jazz Age, Detroit became the country's greatest urban failure, having fallen the longest and the furthest. The city of Henry Ford, modernity and Motown found itself blighted by riots, arson, unemployment, crime and corruption. Yeah, I'm sure it's fascinating. Uh, Mystery and White, a Christmas crime story. This was the big Christmas um, sort of book that was around one one year in sort of the British Library collection. J. Jefferson Fagion. <laughs> um, and it's from 1937. I do love a, a train a mystery. Anything set on a train. A train horror, train crime. Any like cruise horror. Anything set on a cruise, cruise crime, ship. Sorry. Cruise ship or a train. <laughs> now, I've read... These I've are just these fabulous. Two books it? by Anne Bannon. Uh, these are kind of uh, lesbian pulp fiction classics um, from the 50s, I think. Um, so I've read one of them and I haven't got onto the other one. I think they're so, sort of sequels in which they introduce the character of... Um... Bebo. I was going to go Babe and that would yeah. have been really close, wouldn't it? Bebo. Bebo. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco Bay Guardian said, Little did Bannon know that her stories would become legends, inspiring countless fledgling dykes to flock to the village, dog-eared copies of her books in hand, to find their own Bebos and Lauras oh. and others who shared the love they dared not name. Oh, they sound so good. Yeah. I'm going to have to read one. Yeah, I'm they're great. Read I really Bebo. enjoyed the one I read. Dorothy Allison said, When I was young, Bannon's books let me imagine myself in her New York City neighbourhoods of short-haired, dyke-eyed, butch women and stubborn, tight-lipped secretaries with hearts ready to be broken. I would have dated Bebo, no question. Oh. Yeah. So they are proper pulp fiction, you know. They're, yeah. sort of, they're written in that sort of that sort of hard-boiled style. Yeah. But yeah, these are so cool to have. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if they're, they're sort of still readily available, but I snapped them up when they came out. Yeah. They look great. I read um, Commonwealth by Anne Patchett, which I absolutely loved. It's still, you know, still really stuck with me. Um, it was one of my favourite novels of that year. Uh, Sean bought me this one. Run by Anne Patchett, and and also um, Bel Canto, which I DNF'd. Mm. So I'm not sure if it, if I just had that sort of moment of luck with with just starting with the right book. Um, the so, writing was great, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought I thought that was great. Um, this one's got a bookmark, but I haven't actually started it. It's got an Emma Klein bookmark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is about two um, brothers, I think, that are sort of growing up together, and one goes to Harvard and one doesn't go to church or something like that um so i'm sure it's great I just next time i'm in the mood for some patch 
we've got a couple of um, these, uh, what are they called? Persephone. Persephone. That one's mine, isn't it? Yeah, this is yours. This is Little Boy Lost by Marganita Lasky. It's got the oh, lovely nice. paper. It's because it doesn't actually give any description of these books. I'm not sure what they're so I read, about. So the other one that she wrote was the um, the Victorian set Chaise Long. Oh, was that her? Okay. Yeah, which you that. read to me, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. And you read to me... Um, and then I drifted off and it was very much like being in the book because it's about her going to sleep on the yeah. stage long and waking up in, in the past. Yeah. So, like yeah, I really liked that one. Long. So I was kind yeah. of interested in this other yeah. one. And this one is my one. This is Greenery Street by Dennis McHale. McHale. Um, How come he's on there? I don't know. Cause it, it is predominantly all women, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I've heard this is great. Uh, this was a little present from Shani. The Above Underground Peeled by Rob Jovanovich. Uh, big fan of Velvet Underground. This actually, now that I look at it now, looks like something I should read. <laughs> Definitive story of the most influential back, uh, band in rock history. They say that um, hardly anyone bought the Velvet Underground out, first album when it came out, but everyone that did started a band. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, the Hill of Dreams by Arthur Mackin. Did you read this, Johnny? Yes. Yeah. That one was mine because we um I used to have a in work I used to have a reading group um oh, which yeah. where we read Welsh books or uh Welsh interest books or, or historical. There was a whole it was like because we didn't work in a museum, that was the, the links. Um so yeah, I read that one and I really liked it. Yeah. Um it was very weird, um and like a little bit hard to follow at times, but I would yeah, read more. It was really interesting. Yeah. And, and old, like, isn't it, as well? Old. It's an old... It is old, yeah. And they're sort of mystic horror, aren't they? Yes, the uh, mystic is a good Mick word Jagger, for it. Mick Jagger um, is a fan. So yeah, me and Mick Jagger like yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said none of his things have been filmed. They would make incredible films. Yeah. That's from Mick. I thought. Oh, actually, yeah, 1907. Yeah. Mm. Really interesting. Yeah, I need to read this. Is. Uh, Lust Queen and Lust Victim by Don Elliot. Don Elliot is... Robert Silverberg's pseudonym for when he wrote ah, um, sort of trashy pulp. We're learning so much. Yeah. Um, the Stark House Mystery Classics are great. I might, I've got some others somewhere. They are just, they reissue these kind of lost, um, trashy novels. There's a bottom there. There's a bottom. So these yeah. are, yeah, these are his, you know, dime store uh, erotic novels. Mm. Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, these are super fun. Mm, I don't think I am, but thank you mm, very much. You're yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is um, Preston Falls by David Gates. Um, I bought this after I read, um, they reissued one of his books called Jernigan a while ago. Oh, yeah. Which I really enjoyed. You love Jernigan, didn't you? Yeah, I thought it was a really good book. And I think that was from the 80s or 90s. So I sort of found this secondhand copy of another of his books because none of, nothing else by him is in print. It's lovely cover. Um, this is about a guy's midlife crisis in a rural retreat in Preston Falls. Two months spent restoring the faded uh, splendour of a farmhouse, reading Dickens in the evening and watching summer gently fade to autumn. Following a marathon whiskey drinking session, a disastrous attempt to tear out the living room ceiling and an incident with a sheriff at a lo local campsite, Willis ends his first weekend away in jail and it's clear that the wired, burnt out New York copywriter within is still very much to the fore. It's a comic, fiercely compassionate novel. Sounds good. And maybe, I don't know, maybe me think Wonder Boys there uh, for a minute. Yeah, and I think it, it is, yeah, that kind of era mm. of middle-aged men having crisis kind mm. of novels. Which I can relate to. Truman Capote, Music for Chameleons. Is this yours? Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Probably. It's beautiful, yeah. I recently read his early short stories that they uh, released on Penguin. I really enjoyed them. I think they were sort of... Yeah. I loved reading Truman Capote, yeah. He's yeah. Good writer. This is The Best of Gene Wolfe, the definitive retrospective of his finest short fiction. Gene Wolfe is a... Sorry about the dust. Um, is a science fiction writer. Um, I have started this collection, actually. Oh. Fairly, fairly into it. Um, and I really like it. I've, I've got uh, one of his novels as well to read. Um, but yeah, he's just a really highly regarded, highly acclaimed uh, sci-fi author. Of the literary giants of science fiction. I love that quote on the front where Ursula Gwynn said, Wolf is our Melville. Melville. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Look. String too short to be saved. This is Donald Hall, who is um, a poet that I really love. 
he was poet laureate, I think, in America for for a while. This is a collection of stories, which I think are um, like more like essays. Well, on the front fictional. it says "Recollections of Summers on a New England Farm." Yeah, so yeah, it's about his time um, yeah, as a as a boy, young boy it's growing lovely. up on a small farm in New England. Um, he talks about his grandparents. Um, yeah, and he's just a great writer, so he can write about those little moments really well. So, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be really good. It's a nice find, I think. Oh. See anything that catches your eye? Oh! Let me know if there's anything there you've read, or would like to read, or can recommend, or I should move higher up the pile. Or get rid of. the front of the pile, or get rid of. Yeah. Let's discuss. <laughs> um, but, yeah. That's that. Three AAA batteries. Right. You get them with every single torch, so you're right. getting loads of batteries there as yeah. well. You get them in the gift boxes. You've got them ready to rock and roll, really. If you yeah. put one in, still there, fully charged, ready to rock and roll. You've got them ready to rock and roll, really. Charged, ready to rock and roll. So what's I've got you torches for Christmas. Here, five, 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 five different colours. Uh, you see that there? Yeah. You've got to. Rem